Hi, this is Dr. Dale Wagner. I'm an exercise physiologist at Utah State University. We're here in the lab this morning to take a look at um, a body composition measurement using a densitometry method, and we're going to use hydrostatic weighing. So we have two densitometry methods. One is the bod pod, and the other is this one, our hydrostatic weighing tank. Uh, with a hydrostatic weighing, there are two important measurements that we need to get in order to do densitometry. We need to get body mass, which is easy enough to measure just with a scale, and then we need to get body volume, which is the whole point of putting someone in the tank and measuring them underwater. Um, the hydrostatic weighing method works off of a principle known as Archimedes' principle, and Archimedes' principle basically states that if we put an object in water, in a, in a tank or in a, in a tub, a certain amount of water is going to be displaced. The amount of water that's displaced is equivalent to the volume of whatever we put in. And so that's how, um, that's how the underwater weighing procedure works. So we have our client and she's all ready to go. We've already measured her, uh, her mass. The other information that we need to know beforehand, we need to know what's called the tear weight. That's everything other than the client. And so in, that, in this case, that would be our chair. Our chair is fairly heavy, so we ha need to have a baseline measurement of what our chair is. And on here you can see that if you can uh, view the scale, you'll see that it's a five, once the needle goes around one time, it's five kilograms. So you can see that the needle has already gone around twice. So we're at a little over 10 kilograms here. We're at 10.6 .6 kilograms. Um, that's, our, that's our tear weight for the, for the chair. One other thing that we need to know is the temperature of the water. We have a little thermometer in here. And so we just measure the temperature of the water. That's important because as the temperature of the water changes, the density of the water changes and that makes it easier or more difficult for the subject to float. And so all that gets taken into consideration when we put this information in, into equations. We need to know the tear weight, the density of the water, and of course the subject's weight. Okay, um, Jen's ready to go, so we'll have her get into the tank. Be careful. Okay, and she's just going to have a seat on the chair, and the water level's right at her neck, so she doesn't have to bend too far. And the other important thing, there's two things that really makes a per person float, that would be fat and air. Okay, and so it's important that we try to get the subject to blow out all their air under the water. This is very difficult, it's an unnatural maneuver to do, because naturally when you go underwater you want to hold your breath and so we want you to do the exact opposite. So when you go underwater, we want you to blow out as much as you possibly can. Once you think you have all your air out, try to push out just a little bit more, okay? Try to be as still as you can. The more that you move around under the, under the tank, the more difficult it makes it to read the, the needle on the scale. Once you feel like you can't stay down there anymore, that you need some air, just come back up. I'm not gonna tap the wall or anything. It's all up to you, okay? okay. So whenever you're ready. Okay, so you're under, go up, up. Yep. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> blow, blow, blow. And you can still see bubbles, so we know she's still blowing. And right now she's finished. How was that? It was good. Okay. And we're going to try a few more trials, because usually what happens is people learn that they can blow out, they, they learn that they have more air than what they think, and they can blow out more than what they think they can. And once I don't see any more bubbles, then I take a quick look at the scale. And you can see there's a certain technique involved here. Um, it's, it's much more difficult for the technician to, to do underwater weighing that is to do the bod pod because you have to uh, look at several different things at one time. I'm looking at the client to see when I don't see any more air bubbles and then I'm, as soon as I don't see any more air bubbles I have to take a, a quick look at the scale to see where the, where the needle has stopped. So there's a little bit of a technique involved. It's a little bit more difficult for the technician, much more difficult for the client. 
This is a difficult procedure to blow out all your air under the, under the water. And you can see that the scale stopped right around here. So on her, that would be about 12.6 kilograms. And obviously she weighs more than 12.6 kilograms on land. So you can see what the, you know, that it's a huge difference between your land mass and your underwater mass.